Broadcasting live from the scene of the crime on the plain of Ravnica, this is Tap Tap Concede. Welcome everybody to Tap Tap Concede. My name is Graham. Joining me is Kathleen. Hello. And Cameron. Hmm? And today we're talking about murders at Karlov Manor. But first, a reminder that if you want to get yourself some murders at Karlov Manor, why not get it from Card Kingdom? Please check out cardkingdom.com slash LRR. They're our choice to buy the cardboard. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think there's still time to pre-order because this comes out before the pre-release because we're talking about the pre-pre-release, which is two weeks out from... Yeah, you can pre-order it still. Uh, and tell them when you do that that Loading Ready Run sent me a button, please, and they'll give you a little one-inch button which says a funny thing. And I don't know which one we're on, but I probably were out of Four Lines Make Foil Mana at this point. We'll chase that down. We'll figure out which ones we got. Yeah. Mm. I-, I also want to remind you, if you are pre-ordering Murders at Karlov Manor... Mm-hmm. It's play boosters now. I was going to talk about that. Yeah. R- I'll tell you what, real quick. The show is also brought to you by you and your kind support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. Thank you for doing that. So, yeah, we just did the pre pre release uh, yesterday. It was a long day. Good day. That was fun. It was a very fun day. Yeah. Um, we did, uh, because it was just loading ready run, it was just us doing it. We decided to throw, throw back to the first couple of PPRs and we did a tournament. Mm hmm. And uh, Kathleen and I got dusted in the first rounds. Yeah. And Cameron made it to the semis. The semis, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then it was Nelson versus Ben Ulmer in the finals. Mm-hmm. Ben be- uh, succeeded in ultimate champion in our best of five finals. Yeah, it went to five. Yeah, it was yeah. really yeah, good. it was a very tense game. Yeah, spoilers, I guess. <laughs> you know. yeah. Check out the... Check out the the thing if you... The, the VOD, if you hadn't, it should be up on this channel already by now. And it's... Um, uh, it's real good. There's some very, very fun games. Um, but yeah, the first thing at the top of the show, well, there was the judge video. We'll talk about some rule stuff in a second, but uh, we did the we did the pack openings. And yeah, this is our first time with play boosters. Mm-hmm. And I got to say, because uh, again, our we did a whole episode about this. Not a whole episode, but we talked about this extensively. And mm-hmm. sort of our big, our big um, issue with it was the potential increase in price mm-hmm. obviously that has not affected this because wizard sent this product uh, so <laughs> simply I, get your stuff for free simply get wizards to send you your stuff for free that is no less of an issue um but the experience of using them it felt surprisingly similar to just regular draft boosters i was mm-hmm. considering the breakdown of like there's this slot that does this and this slot could have this and this and this uh i it was like it felt fairly normal. There was a couple packs that had more than one rare. Um, There's a list cards in there. Some folks, myself, got no cards from the list. Some folks got one card from the list. I think it was that about, was me. I think maybe half the folks got one card from the list. Cameron ended up with three of them. In my defense, I only sleeved up one. That's true, which was Sir Conrad, yeah. which yeah. was amazing. That yeah. was that was wild. You can, if you can get Sir Conrad in your sealed pool. I really recommend sleeving him. Yeah, especially in a set with collecting evidence where you pull stuff out of your graveyard. And yeah, yeah, it's very, very cool. Very powerful. Honestly, Sir Conrad might be one of like the just all-star standouts of basically any format you could put him in. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's I, I was kind of surprised by how much like a draft booster they felt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just I, I don't know how you you had similar experiences. So you still get th- three uncommons, right? Or can you get yeah. more uncommons? And there's one fewer common mm-hmm. than previous draft boosters. Yeah, which is not usually the problem when you're building a sealed deck, to be honest with you. You know, you're looking for those uncommons and those rares. And just the commons are stronger now, too. That was part of the... They, they mentioned that they knew this was coming for a while, so part of the design philosophy was to start making the commons stronger yeah and boy howdy no more they. zephyr spirit i mean you look so you, uh ben's deck ben ended up playing boros he opened some like pretty cool like bomby cards yeah he was originally splashing for judith and eventually was like i i don't need to make my mana less consistent because he mm-hmm. looked at all of his commons and uncommons and was like i have just a lot of really like very efficient, reliable commons and uncommons in white and red, you know, beep beep, yeah. and and one preposterous rare. <laughs> but like the 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 deck was not like bomb bomb bomb. It was not this like 
absolutely preposterous sealed pool. It was just like, oh, all these cards are good. Let's just play these cards. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. The 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 spirit detective that would jump anytime a creature with power two or less came in. That was just a common. Yeah, what's that one called? Do, I, we, do, do we remember <laughs> the one one flying vigilance? No. Yeah. I was or, thinking about the two two ground guy that would become oh. a flyer every time you ever oh. and that was just a common, but oh, like because yeah. it triggers off manifest, it's actually quite synergistic. Right? Um, cloak or Cloak yeah, or the... anything. Oh right. Yeah, sorry, face yeah. down creatures. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. I we don't Manifest. remember the name of this card. I'm sorry. It wasn't in any of our decks. <laughs> no, but I watched it in the finals and it put in very good work. <laughs> it was I don't know. It's white. It's got a guy, he's running like this. Uh he's <laughs> transparent. Oh, wait, yes, I know that one. She's transparent because he's a ghost. He's like yes. running through the, the... Through the market. Running through the market. Hang on, I'll try to find hmm. this out. Oh, James is, Market Watch Phantom. He's right. scrambling to find it. Thank you, James. So yeah, it's just one and a white for a 2-2. Two -two. It's just a bear. But whenever another creature with power 2 or less enters the battlefield, Market Watch Phantom gains flying until end of turn. Yeah. So, oh yeah, yeah. This it's, um, puts me in mind of um, Duskwalker from Amonkhet that you could exert oh, yeah. to give it flying. Yeah. yeah. Or... This is there was better than that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was um, there was one from there was like a two one from Strixhaven in the Silver Quill realm that was you could pay two life to give it flying. Uh yeah. Oh. It, the, this is also better than that. Yes, but but yeah, the, yeah. the the sort of the two mana the two mana two power creature that conditionally can get flying mm -hmm. is a cool thing that they've done. Uh, yeah, and it's interesting now that I think about it that the two cards that come to mind immediately when talking about Mar Market Watch Phantasm, or Market Watch Phantom, are a Amonkhet white card yep. and a uh, uh, Strixhaven. Strixhaven Silver Quill card, both notable, like, aggro formats, mm -hmm. or at least, like, very, very, like, um, formats where you have to have something going on on the ground early on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I in wouldn't... order not to be left behind. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was an aggro. I wouldn't. I mean, Almond Cat was like relentlessly aggressive, Ugh. but I found that Strixhaven, once the format stabilized, you could do things like because there's the 3 3 defender that was really right. good that would just block all of that Silver Quill nonsense. Uh, Prismari Pris Pledge Mage. Pris yeah. yeah. Prismari Pledge Mage. So you could do. You could muck around and do silly things as long as you had things that could soak damage for you. Right, like you, you, but you you couldn't take turn two off. Yeah, no. strict yeah. yeah, that's true. I think, and I think that this is definitely a format where you can you can do both. Like this really seems like a doing both format in terms of like you know the uh, the the obviously the aggressive deck uh, won the day, but it went to five. It was pretty close. Um, I had a deck that was like slower value stuff and. And so did Cameron, but Cameron had more more beat. Cameron beat me in the first round. Hmm. Uh, the detective synergy that you had, yeah. The, so you were Demir with a white splash, or no? Uh, I was Orzov with a blue splash. Right, really, I got that backwards. Um, yeah. Although, truth be told, like it was mainly black with. I think I had when I when I did my mana base, I had something like three times as much as many black pips as I did white or green or white or blue. Mm -hmm. So. The the second game I remember distinctly. I had a removal spell. I had murder. Love to see murder back. And I was facing down Cameron's board. And he had the projector inspector, which is a three two detective. And whenever it or another detective enters the battlefield, you loot. And the private eye, mm -hmm. which is the three three detective gives other detectives plus one plus one and whenever you draw your second card each turn target detective can't be blocked this turn mm -hmm. drawing your second card like from looting with projector inspector he had the wojack investigator which is the two four flying detective with vigilance mm -hmm. for three mana so that's a three five with the private eye out and it can just hit you know and and then also lazav who is a detective and then when lazav attacks Exile something from a graveyard and makes a clue, and then you can immediately sacrifice the clue to draw a card and make Lazav unblockable and and optionally make Lazav into one of these things. And so I'm sitting there with one removal spell, and I'm legitimately having a very challenging time determining like what the problem is. Like, right, right. like Private Eye 
takes has the most power on the board and can make things unblockable, but Cameron has to do a little bit of work to get that unblockable trigger. Lazav is exiling stuff out of my graveyard. I don't really... I have some recursion, but I don't really have a lot of evidence collection. Mm. But is Lazav frightening just that Lazav can make a make a clue every turn? Uh, if Private Eye's gone, maybe I can block Lazav. The Wojak Inspector is just kicking my crap in in the air. Uh, like, it's, it was such a, like... There were so many moving parts going on. I was like, I am in so much trouble here. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, yeah. The, the the detective deck just has so many fun synergies, and mm -hmm. they all kind of, like, cascade into one another. It's, I don't know, it feels good when there's a lot of, like, things happening on the stack, and you get to say, accept. Yes, mm -hmm. I would also like to do that. Oh, that too, please. <laughs> um, when the game is like, may I interest you in? more value and you're like oh please <laughs> yeah it's oh how delightful oh. yeah what uh, uh what, what what um your deck also seems sweet it turns out you and i were both playing uh green black and uh, the the, the chat splashes. yeah the chat was like oh i guess green black is bad because both no, Graham and kathleen lost in the no, first round but like no. i counted how much land i drew oh, yeah, especially the second game that was incredible yeah like that was a and us misreading the card and then causing one of my literally five fetch effects in my deck to get me cards or spells or something like that being milled off to, like it was mm. like that was i got hit hard by the uh the uh the wooden or variant in a very unusual way uh so that uh, uh knocked out j org is an outlier and should not be counted <laughs> <laughs> like it's un unbelievable how much land I drew. It was, like there's it not. Was it's not like I was running that. Like I had. I drew like sixty percent of my land, and when we shuffled my deck, we put two land back on top. It was like bananas. Yeah, like, it's, it's 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 not a sixteen land format that just incorporates flooding James, who is an outlier. <laughs> yes, should not be counted. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what sort of stuff did did you? Because again, your deck looked sweet. What sort of stuff was in it? Okay, so I had I had uh, two copies of Analyze the Pollen. Which, if you can exile eight, then you don't. Then you can just get it's any just a card. It's just a tutor. I had well, creature or land, but still. Three, well, okay, but most yeah. like that's what I really wanted was three creatures. So I had like two copies of that. I had the nervous gardener, and I had the case of the stash skeleton. I had something else that could fetch me land as well. You so, also had a case of the stash skeleton. Yeah, and then I milled it off oh, to that's that really funny. Uh, to that removal. But I really needed to get that phoenix out of the way, or I was going to die. So mm -hmm. my um, my deck, I was I I called it. It's just the one skeleton, actually, which of course is a hot fuzz reference. But the uh, the because I also had this card, which we never got to see. Um, but I just want to talk about it briefly. So this is the case. It's one in a black. When it enters the battlefield, you make a 2-1 black skeleton creature token and suspect it, meaning it has menace and can't block. To the solve condition is one of my favorite pieces of rules text in a very long time, which is you control no suspected skeletons, <laughs> which I love that because I choose to interpret it as you suspect something of being a skeleton. <laughs> it's like, I think that's a skeleton. No. Uh-uh. Clack, clack. Uh, and then the, the, once it's solved, uh, for one and a black, you can sacrifice it, search your library for a card. So that is just a tutor. Put it into your hand and then shuffle and then activate it only as a sorcery. But that's hmm. that's fine. Um, so here's I want to talk about cases real quick because we didn't actually get to see a lot of them yesterday. No. I had a couple in my deck. Never drew them. I had I had a couple of cases as well, but uh, drew land instead. Yeah. Opt opted to not play them, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, they seem, broadly speaking, they seem really cool. Uh, I like that they're, even within the set, they've explored the design space where there's ones like this, where it's just, they do a thing when they enter, and then you can solve it, and then they do something else. And, and then, then it's done. Yeah, and then there's also ones uh, like, I don't remember the name of it, but you had it in the EDSC, uh, Kathleen. The, oh, yes. It's like every upkeep you surveil. Uh, that's the default and then you can solve it and then you get other stuff but the surveilling every upkeep still happens it's yes. just it's it's an enchantment that sits there and keeps doing a thing thank you case of the shifting visage uh one blue blue at the beginning of your upkeep surveil to solve there's 15 more cards in your graveyard solved whenever you cast a non-legendary creature spell copy that spell hmm. pretty sweet so that that just sort of sits there and keeps happening and i think that's really cool that they've they're sort of exploring that design space um 
while we were preparing to record that episode of EDSC, because this falls under the umbrella of early impressions of 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 this format, uh, we have a complaint with the uh, templating of these cards and the reminder text. Because unless you, if you know how cases work, it's fine. Hmm. If you don't know how they work, the reminder text is confusing. Because the middle clause there says to solve. There are 15 or more cards in your graveyard. If unsolved, solve at the beginning of your end step. And all of us read that as, hold on. Does that mean that either it solves right away when you play it, if you have 15 more cards in your graveyard, or it just solves itself on your end step no matter what, mm -hmm. which is not the case. It's It checks at your end step, and then if you have the condition, then it becomes solved. It's just the way the wording of, like, check to solve at your end step maybe would have been better or something. But the if unsolved, solve at the beginning of your end step, to me says, if if we haven't solved it, then it's going to happen at the end step, regardless of if you have you you satisfy the conditions or not, which is... A lot of kitchen table magic players are going to mess this up. Yeah. 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 It's going to be real bad. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I guess they're kind of um, can be thought of as like the opposite of sagas, where sagas mm. usually like they work advance at on the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. This goes at the end. Yeah, so I mean, if you know that, and you know, public service message for you. Now you know how sag how cases are supposed to work, but I just think if you don't know that, that's super unclear. Also, and this is something that James brought up, and now I can't unsee it, and it's bugging the crap out of me. Is that the middle clause on every single one of these? The to solve the T is it's like real close touching to that. the line. It's t it's practically touching. Then some of them I think it is touching the line, and it is visually bothering the it, crap out of me. It makes the like the webbing between my fingers itch. <laughs> yeah. Like it's just it's too close. I don't it's like too it. close. I don't. So PSA to all you and your friends for kitchen table magic. It when it says if unsolved, solve at the beginning of your end step. What it means is. Check to see if you meet the condition, then solve. Yeah, hmm. this is interesting. Actually, we talked about this in the in the judge video. Um, there's two points where this the case will check if it can be solved, and this is super relevant if you want to get very granular about stuff. But um, if you don't, if you do not satisfy the condition of solving the case, uh, it won't even check nothing even goes on the stack so in the case of the case of the shifting visage which we have here um uh, uh, if you don't have 15 or more cards in your graveyard nothing even happens in your end step hmm. if you do have 15 or more cards in your graveyard that goes on the stack and is like hey i'm about to solve with that on the stack somebody could exile your graveyard somebody could bog you or exile something out of your graveyard to bring you back below 15 and then when the ability tries to resolve it will then f it will then fail to do so and you'll have to solve it again later so th there is a there there is a window potentially to stop someone from solving their case depending on what the condition is and if you can interact with it obviously but there is a window to do that so i think that that's a relevant piece of gameplay tech for you to take yeah. home more interaction is more better I yes, I do I do like to interact with with my opponent's cards. Hmm. The other there was another um interesting rules thing and I'm trying to remember because of course I watched the judge video several times over the course of getting ready for the PPR and I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh oh right. Um in a similar vein, collect evidence goes in two different directions. Um so if we actually we bring back analyze the pollen. Uh so this is, it says, as an additional cost to cast Analyze the Pollen, you may collect Evidence 8. So that's part of casting the spell. That's a cost. You know, you as the player whose turn it is, you have priority. Your opponent doesn't get to, doesn't get to stop that from happening, right? Mm -hmm. There's no window of time where they get to go, oh, I'm actually going to exile stuff out of your graveyard. Now you're Analyze the Pollen only looks for land. Like, that doesn't get to happen. That is part of a cost. Uh, similarly, I don't remember the name of it. There's a, I want to say it's a Simic Merfolk that has like a, uh, oh, actually, here you go. Here's one I remember. The, tr oh God, no, wait, the Truth Orb. What's it called? The, um, it's not Truth oh, Orb. It's a black it's, artifact. It's a black artifact and it's the, it's 
the lie detector test. Polygraph uh, orb. Oh, thank, po- thank you. Polygraph orb. Um, this card is sweet, by the way, I think. Mm-hmm. So it's a black artifact. Four and a black. It does a thing when it enters the battlefield, which is looks at the top four cards of your library, put two of them into your hand, and the rest into your graveyard, and you lose two life. I'm always a fan of those effects when they're spells. This is an artifact that sticks around and says, two and tap, collect evidence three. Each opponent loses three life unless they discard a card or sacrifice a tr- sacrifice a creature. It's a little Terrigrid's lantern. lantern. Yeah. yeah, it's a yeah. Little, 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 little mini torment. Um, this is also a cost and cannot be interacted with. You have priority. You pay your two mana. You tap it. You collect evidence. Mm-hmm. Then there's the colon in the sentence that your opponent doesn't get to like scoop your graveyard yeah. out from underneath yeah. you. Yeah, unlike the happen. other thing, well, you, you cannot be bogged in response to tapping yes. this. Mm-hmm. Conversely, if we look at collecting evidence on the Ferox... Um, the uh, wa- Axbane. No, the no. Axbane Ferox was the was the the hexproofy one from previous from the guilds uh, block. Wandering Ferox. It's the questing beast at home. Nelly had it. Oh right. It's two yeah. green green. It's got death touch and haste. And saying, oh, it is Axbane Ferox. I'm sorry, Kathleen. My That's bad. Okay. Taking that L. Uh, it's got ward. Collect evidence for. First of all, I I like Ward. I like that Ward lets them play with different mm. costs. Sometimes it's discard a card. Sometimes it's pay life. Usually it's just paying extra mana. But mm. I think playing with different Ward costs is a neat design space. That's cool. In this case, Ward is a trigger. So if you target Axbane Ferox, that trigger goes on the stack. The controller of the Ferox can then, if they are able to do so exile stuff out of your graveyard before you get to pay the ward f- making you unable to pay for the ward mm. so in this instance and there's a couple other instances just you you if it's tldr if it's part of a cost your opponent can't mess with your ability to collect evidence if there's a trigger like this one they can so be aware I just realized that Ferox is on top of a griffin. Yeah, Feroxes are a, are big and a problem. Yep. Don't Quite. don't go to Axbane. Huh. That's huge. Yeah, it's a large lad. He's a oh. he's a scary rude dude with attitude. Hmm. What was the name of the other Ferox? The one that sort of is, looks a little like the honey bear. It's going like Argh. I don't remember. It was like Nullhide, Nullhide Ferox. Ferox. Mm. That's the one. Right, it's got a hexproof. You can't cast non-creature spells, but you can pay two, and it loses those abilities, and any player can pay that. But if a spell or ability makes you discard it, you also put it into your graveyard. It's a weird card. He needs a Very manicure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no wonder he's so angry. He can't, like, he dropped a quarter. and. <laughs> um, I, I like collect evidence. It feels like a fixed delve. Yeah. In that it probably won't see any play out of, like, limited. <laughs> right? Like, con- good news, everyone. We fixed delve. Now it doesn't let you do unfair things. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's nice for it, I suppose. (laughs) I liked doing unfair things. Yeah, exactly. Well, except like, I mean, yes, I agree with everything you just said. But also, it potentially takes fewer individual cards to satisfy the conditions. But then I, I feel like they... They balanced for that. Nothing. Mm-hmm. There's there's nothing that I looked at with collecting evidence that I was like, whoa, this is unfair. Uh, I mean, you don't always get it, and that's fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did have a lot of removal uh, in my deck, which I think we saw in the first game where I was just like, kill that, kill that, kill that. Um, one of them was bite, uh, take a bite of crime. Take, bite down on crime. Bite down on crime. Thank you. Mm-hmm. A bite. A bite spell. We've 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 now learned. Thank you, viewers at home. The previous episode, Cameron. I don't think you were on this one where we were talking about like fight, uh, fight cards or fight, v- punch? fight versus. So I've been calling them punches, right? And I right? was like, no, I swear to God, it's a bite. Yeah, and because it's called it, the original one was rabid bite, mm-hmm. and then there's been bite down. I think there's been like one or two, yeah. And then now we have bite down on crime, which is a very funny joke. And uh, the comments universally were like, "Yeah, they're bites, obviously, because it says bite in the card and it rhymes with fight. It's fight and bite." And I was like, "Why have I been saying punch?" And I think it's because it's of, like, Sorak punch many bears. Yeah, yeah, Sorak I, punch many bears. I guess it's like how colloquially or locally, I guess, um, we used to call fetchland snaplands here. In oh Victoria, yeah, right. We like, always called them snaplands. Yeah. Like and then people way were like, back what in the day of 2010. About? Yeah. yeah. 
because that was the local. Because you'd like snap them off and go looking for the. It was a. It was like a Highlander colloquialism. I think yes. so. Yeah. And it's only when we started talking with like other content creators or people at uh, Magic Fe- or GPs at the time, where people were like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, and we're that's like, "That's a fetch land." Because huh. mm-hmm. you fetch what you need, and we're like, "Well, that was the, that was the fashion at the time." Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this is this is cool because you can you can just make it cheaper, and this this effect for two mana uh, is very good. And I almost got. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm talking about a cool interaction I didn't get to do, uh, which was this and the 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 rot um, rot farm m- rot farm mortipede. Yes. Mm. So three four for four. And whenever one or more car- creature cards leave your graveyard, it gets plus one, plus zero, oh, and menace, and lifelink until end of turn. Uh, that seems like a great way to keep you in the game. Uh, mm-hmm. Boy, that's that art is upsetting. Um, that's just the circle of life, baby. I know, but it's so big. It's it's so big. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, the uh, casting bite down on crime. I didn't have anything in my graveyard. But if you can, then you collect evidence exiling a creature card from your graveyard on your mortipede and then your bite does lifelink damage and then also your mortipede's big and has lifelink and that's i just think that's a very cool combo that i didn't do but maybe you can <laughs> yeah yeah no it, it uh it's one of those really punishing uh green mechanics where you know resolve a threat that's bigger than your thing next turn use a, a bite card mm-hmm. to remove any of your like whatever your play was yeah. And then hit you for seven, right? Uh, like, yeah. it's been with us since, I th- I think the first time I, like, got absolutely rolled by it repeatedly was in Kaladesh. Mm-hmm. And something else that I quite enjoy for this limited format, um, and I assume this will come up in draft as well, it certainly is helpful for sealed. So pro tips, if you're building um, your, uh, your sealed deck for pre-release next weekend... But I was in green-black, and I was also running a Selesnya card and a Rakdos card with no white or red sources because they were disguise cards. Mm. So I had Shady, yes. Inf- Shady Informant, uh, which face-up casts for three black-red. But you can disguise it, so you pay any mana. You get your 2-2 two, two with Ward 2, and then you can turn it up for two and two hybrid Rakdos, which in my deck was just two black-black. Mm-hmm. And that's totally fine yep and it really helped fill out the fill the deck out with some with some cards this one when it dies it deals two damage to something that's, that's fine that's fine the crowd control warden i want to talk about because wheeler actually was was uh quite high on that card well he was talking about this one and the bubble smuggler which we'll talk about in a moment but crowd control warden it's three three green white for a four four but the disguise turn face up cost is it's still five mana but it's three and two hybrid Selesnya. So again, in my deck, it was three green, green. As it's turned face up, you put X plus one, plus one counters on it where X is the number of other creatures you control. That's powerful. It is. And so what Wheeler was observing was that this is not something that they've done before, that this is not a trigger. This is not when crowd control warden is turned face up, this happens, meaning your opponent would have time to respond to this. This is as it's turned face up. There is no time that crowd control warden is a, if you have is other creatures four, four. there's no time that it's a four four for your opponent to respond and do like i don't know stoke the flames is the only four mana thing i could think of off off the top of my head or four damage thing uh as a methods enthusiast that's no, a sorcery whatever it doesn't matter um the point being uh yeah it's as it's turned face up so it's part of the special action of turning the card face up and there's no chance to respond to it and that's the same with the bubble smuggler which is one in a blue for a two one but it has disguise and you can turn it face up for is it five six. six mana, and then you put four counters on it, and it becomes a six five. There is no opportunity to like get in the way of that. I think that's a good change for like the feels bad potential of okay, oh, well God. I <laughs> yeah. I sink six mana into flipping this thing up, and then in response you spend one mana to shock it. Mm-hmm. Right? It's like Ugh. yeah, um, yeah the the. I I would love to see a breakdown of the costs of turning things face up, of the skies costs, because I remember back in, well, way back in the day, uh, uh, for uh, cons, right, the, the design ethos was like, if your opponent has three mana or less, the most a morph will be able to do is trade for an X2. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, it, it was or, five. Or, the break or, point was yeah, five. Five? Yeah. Five, right. Uh, sorry, for a 2x. Yeah. Um, and then, like, if they have more mana than that, then, you know, bets are off. Yeah. It can be extremely dangerous. At five mana is where you get ones that just are big or have first strike or, ha- you know, like, the yeah, or just are, <laughs> are huge. But, yeah, if the, if the if the turn face up cost is less than that, two two morphs with unmorph costs of less than five will trade in combat, mm-hmm. I think, is generally true. Or, yes. or just in the case of one that's like turns into an 06, just won't. There, it will be without casualties. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like the, the the interaction I enjoyed the most uh, was in our game, mm. where you had a disguised card, mm-hmm. um, and I had drawn Long Goodbye. Yes, I was at three life, and you had already shown me one of the assassins, the, the disguised assassins that do three damage when they're turned face up. That's the Alley Strangler, and you had five mana open. Mm-hmm. So. I don't know if I was like getting into my own head about this, but if it was another alley strangler, I was dead. As and soon I as had I to, re- yeah, as soon yeah. as you untapped. Um, and your other card was the two one that can suspect itself, and then starts to get big, which is right? the um, the re- uh, re- repeat offender. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's yeah. like the lady, and she's just like, Ooh. yeah, yeah, and and somebody's holding up the wanted poster yeah, with her it face looks on like it. Her. Um, so, Long Goodbye says, uh, this spell can't be countered, and it in the reminder text, it says, this includes by the ward ability. Mm-hmm. Destroy target creature or planeswalker with mana value three or less. It's an instant one in black. It's, it's made for killing disguised creatures, mm-hmm. Yeah, essentially. You know, it gets a lot of other things, but the disguised creatures feels good. Um, so, if it was the Alley Strangler, I was, I was dead and I had to kill it there. Um, but five mana is still a lot of mana, and if it is a five mana disguised creature, um, and it is turned face up in response to long goodbye, then the spell is it, it is countered, mm-hmm. right? I, I want to say fizzled. Apparently, that's no longer the word, but it can't it can't resolve, right? Um, and as it turns out, it wasn't Alley Strangler. It was another five mana disguised. I think creature. it was. The, I think that one was the Shady Informant, right? Ali Assailant? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Ali yeah. Assailant. Yeah. This is the one that's, it's like the guy that killed Bruce Wayne's parents was the, the, was the original, uh, like, art brief for it. So obviously this didn't make it on because there's no room for flavor text. But I did submit a, I was like, that's pretty grim. So I admitted, so I submitted some flavor text for this, which oh, obviously yeah. didn't get picked. That was like, that day, you know, young booze or whatever I said the kid's name was discovered his mother had been a Boros legionnaire. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, no, no Batman for Ravnica, no Batman for Ravnica, just man getting punched. Yeah. A the, kid. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, that's the one thing is no violence against children. No, Ugh. uh, the, um, uh, so here, further further pro tip for for you then, uh, you at home, with the long goodbye. Um, when you're playing on arena and you target uh, one of the disguised creatures or cloaked creatures, arena is going to ask you, "Do you want to pay the ward?" So just mm-hmm. just say no. Yeah, just say no. <laughs> because yeah, that's the long goodbye. You know, the ward will then try to counter the long goodbye. Long goodbye cannot be countered, and you will still get to kill the uh, kill the face down creature unless they have all their mana open and turn it up as as Cameron just mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, in person, you know, same thing. You just like, I target that. And I, your opponent may be like, do you pay the ward? No, you don't pay the ward. Because that's yeah, the do, you pay the no. yeah. do you pay the two? No. Do you pay the two? Do you pay the two? Do you pay the Remember, two? never pay the two. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Somebody else will pay the two. <laughs> it took me a sec to figure this out. I was like, oh, okay, sure. Yeah, this is, this is probably a fine thing to include. It's instant speed, kill something small. Sure. Can't be countered. Oh, that's neat. What's this reminder text for? Can't, including ward. Yeah, okay, I guess that... Wait, all the face-down creatures have ward. That's what this card is for! <laughs> Which, you know, is 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 obvious, but I felt very smart at the time, because I was like, oh, I get it! Yeah. So. Um, I, good card. Interesting. Yeah. Like, it leads to some interesting dilemmas. Yeah. Right? Yeah, if you, you have allowed your opponent, like me, if you have allowed your opponent to present you with a dilemma rather than a problem. Yeah, and um, you, you really thought about that play. Yeah. And, and I, <laughs> I said at the time, I, like, next-level... Like I, I misunderstood two different things, uh, and it it ended up working out in my favor. But um, I, uh, 
I flipped it up because I thought, A, that it was still going to die, forgetting mm. that once it's face up, it's now five, it's mana value five and can't be killed by the long goodbye. But B, I thought Shady Informant um, had a, like, turn face up trigger to right, deal two, two damage. damage. Yeah, so I turned it face up because I thought it was going to die uh, and then was going to deal... I don't know. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I was like, oh, I got to get my value out of this before it dies. And it turns out that it didn't die, but it also didn't, didn't do any damage. And so I was like, wait, what have I done here? Oh, well, I, I still have my creature. Like, it, this is this is fine. I paid five mana, or yeah, I paid four mana to counter this long goodbye. But I was like, boy, <laughs> these are brand new cards. Read the cards, Graham. Yeah. Snitches. Why would we, or stitches for snitches. <laughs> why would we pay for the health care? Yeah, why would we help the snitches? <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. Um, the other card that I kind of enjoyed uh, was Reasonable Doubt, mm. um, because it is a it is a one in a blue counter target spell unless its controller pays two. It's uh, miscalc. Mm. Um, suspect up to one target creature. The more I played with this card, the more I hated its guts. <laughs> I it um, <laughs> okay. So you can imagine a scenario where your opponent has gone first. Um, and you decide to take turn two off to hold this up to counter the inevitable disguise creature. Right. Right. Um, and you can do that. That that works. Yeah. I think that's his best case scenario. The suspect clause. Um, one, if you were on a blue kind of like control deck, you can target one of your creatures, which means it can no longer block. Mm. Mm. Bad case for a blue control deck. Or you can target one of your opponent's creatures, which means it has menace. Right? I think this really wants to be in like a tempo y deck mm. where you are like countering a murder on three and protecting a two drop that is like swinging in. Right. More of an, this is for more of like an aggressive, like maybe in like an is it spells deck. Yes. I think yeah. it would work really well in that like hyper sort of like there's lots of stuff flying around detective deck. Mm. Right. Where it's like, no, you can't kill my thing. And now my stupid thing that's already annoying you. Now you have to like put multiple resources. In yeah. Or, or you have to have like two reach creatures. Yeah, to exactly. Interact with to it. interact with this. Actually, something I want to talk about broad strokes that I noticed as I was opening the sealed pool and as everybody was opening their sealed pools is that uh, especially following LCI, which had a lot of fixing and colorless ways to search up other lands like the little, like the compass gnome and the sunbirds um, standard sunbird standard. And then also had lots of treasure, lots of treasure. Mm -hmm. That is not, a, there's, I don't, I'm sure there's cards that make treasure, but not nearly to the degree that there was in Lost Caverns of Ixalan. I don't recall any treasure in this. I don't. I don't recall it, but I'm not going to say there's no treasure because I surely they snuck it onto some cards. But anyway, um, you may have this idea in your head, as I do, that it's like, oh right, Ravnica, lots of colors. There's all the guild gates. There's all the mm -hmm. you know. There's or there's the bounce lands or the guild gates or the 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 other ones or whatever. No, there is a cycle of dual lands at rare which is not an uncommon thing to have happen. And there is the normal amount of mana fixing in green. Uh, and that's it. This is not... There's a couple uh, of uncommon lands that do things as well, but they're uncommon, right? Yeah, so we've yeah. got... There's the, there's the escape tunnel, which is like a strictly better evolving wilds, in that it just has another ability that if you can sacrifice it to make a tiny creature unblockable for this turn. But it's basically just evolving wilds. There's... I mentioned at the top of the show, there's the Public Thoroughfare, which is a Trans Guild Promenade or Rupture Spire card. It's basically exactly the same as that, except you can also tap, instead of a land, you can tap an artifact, like a yeah. clue. Like a clue. So Clues do not need to tap in order to be sacrificed either. Yeah, you can tap it and sacrifice it, mm -hmm. so that's very cool. Or tap an equipment. Uh, but like, but that's it. Like, the There's no common or uncommon cycle of dual lands. And mm -hmm. so the fixing in this set is below what i was expecting going in and when i was putting the sealed pool together i was like okay so what can i splash for and realizing i really can't like i i did end up splashing blue for two cards and that was off of i had i had both of those cards i had the escape tunnel and the public thoroughfare and they went that way which is two and a green 
for go and look for a card or uh, go and look for a basic land and investigate and put on the battlefield tapped uh and i had nervous gardener which is a disguise it's a it's a it's a two two for two uh but it's a disguise card this and card is a banger it's it's, it's yeah. very good you pay a single green to turn it face up and then you get to search for a basic land put it into your hand and shuffle and i also had arch druid's charm one of the modes of which is go looking for a land and put it into play. It's land or creature, but if it's a land, doesn't say basic, mm-hmm. you can put it into play uh, uh, tapped. The other modes on Archer's Charm are also good. One of them is you put a plus and plus encounter on something and it bites and then exile target artifact or enchantment. Very good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so like good card. Uh, there's, the, there's also the Topiary Panther that is the one card with land cycling. It's one in a green, so it's it is it must be like the 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 fixing is in green, as is sort of a traditional mm-hmm. magic set. It's one in a green that can go looking for any basic. It's basic land cycling. You can look for any of the any of the basics, but the cost is one in a green. So this is very much more akin to. Um, uh, it's actually. Is this just better than the Tanuki? I guess the Tanuki is an enchantment mm-hmm. creature. I don't know if that's relevant. Anyway, it was pretty relevant in in, in, in the set in yeah. uh, Neon Genesis Kamigawa. Anyway, the uh, point being, uh, broadly speaking, the the fixing is what I would say like the normal amount for a yes. set. And I feel like the last several sets that we've been playing with, certainly if you were checking out cons on Arena recently, uh, fixing has been plentiful and good. And this is just like ratchet back to normal. So. You're not going to be doing three colors very often. Yeah, yeah. This feels like kind of an Amonkhet level of fixing. I mean, mm-hmm. if um, you you could probably could do three colors as long as one of them was green. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Topiary Panther, notable also be, for being a six CMC cost. So, you know, it's very good to like land cycle and then you have like six on tap for collect oh, evidence. Oh, that's yes. really good. Um, really good point. Yeah. But like, I actually kind of enjoy this amount of fixing for a Ravnica set yeah. because... Ravnica is the city of guilds, these two-color institutions that are supposed to be kind of, like, uh, insular and a little, like, antagonistic towards one another. Mm -hmm. Yet all the Ravnica sets, because you want to have the color identities represented across all of the types of cards, you wind up with with a lot of dual lands, Mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, guild gates are cool, the the bounce lands are cool, the... um, the rare lands are cool, right? Like that they all feel they contribute to the feel of Ravnica. Yeah. But what they do in in gameplay terms is that they uh mean that you can splash very aggressively across multiple guilds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. People are like, Okay, well you've given me a really solid mana base for my guild, but now I can do four color nonsense. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So um you know, it's 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 a problem. What do you want? like what do you, what does uh, mana fixing look like in order to facilitate really, really easy two-color play, but not facilitate um, like splashing across multiple guilds. Things like the um, the the signets, right, mm. worked really well for that. Right. There's no signets. There's no clue stones. There's no mana well, rocks. Like no that. one's upset. There's no clue stones. No, True. but I just mean there's nothing. There, there's no cycle of things like that. This is probably the the lowest end of fixing for a set in ravnica mm-hmm. i have two somewhat unrelated thoughts now that we're done our fixing discussion mm. one i think it's a, a testament to the strength of how much people like ravnica that you can come off a set like dragon's maze which remember the 10 clue stones at common yes. yeah and that people still like the setting yeah. yeah and we're still hyped to go back to it yeah uh and two the uh the flavor text for topiary panther which neither of us did i no. think this might have been I, it was either Josh or Ben. Yep. I don't remember if I didn't write it. It's really hard for me to remember. Not but I think ben. this might have been the Ben, ben the... Plasiak. Yeah. Plasniak? Plas- Plasiak? Yes, sure. I, Magical sorry. writer. Magical writer. Whoever wrote this, the gardens around Karlov Manor are oddly bereft of birdsong. Very, like, uh, suddenly very funny to me. It's very, very <laughs> good. Um, hey, I have an idea. James, can I open one of these? Do we need these? Uh, no, yeah, you can open Cool. Actually, just really quickly while you, you dig into that, yeah. uh, because I love you, I don't want you to get it roasted in the comments, you did forget two lands that technically do fix. Okay, so and there's... There's no more lands to talk about, so there's, oh. there's the branch. 
Oh. Did not see this okay, one. Okay, so this one's another uncommon. So, like, the thing is, uncommons are not likely to turn up in your pool. They're oh, uncommon. weird. Okay, right. So this, the branch of Itugazi is a land with disguise. So you can pay the three and make it a 2-2 creature and then pay another three to turn it face up. And when it's turned face up, you add two mana of any one color. Okay. Is that's... this a fixed maze of if? No. No. You block with it, turn it face up. Oh, and then and it's then like th- their creature doesn't do any damage because this is a land and it falls out of combat. Yeah, <laughs> I think Maze of Ith is a is maybe a stretch of a comparison, but that's but, a fascinating thought. Yeah. yeah. No. I, yeah. Okay. Okay. I I I see where you're going. <laughs> where you're going with there? Huh. Weird. And what's the other land? Is it the? Well, the other one is the one that you mentioned at the top of the show. <gasps> uh, the right. Another uncommon land. Mm-hmm. Six. Right, right, right. So it's this is a weird one. This is an artifact land clue, which I didn't know that this card existed until James mentioned it before we started recording today. Enters tapped, taps for a, a one colorless, or tap and tap an untapped creature you control to add one mana of any color. So it's like a spring leaf drum. And also for two mana and sacrifice a draw card. It, this seems like this seems sweet for limited. Yeah, but I. Yeah. This is a cool card. Both of these are cool cards. They are. So your mana fixing, outside of green, Mm -hmm. is four uncommons and a cycle of rare dual lands. I think Escape Tunnel and Public Thoroughfare are common. Are they? Still. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so two uncommons and two commons. When When you're used to... Uh, a common cycle of Enter's Tap dual lands and a common cycle of mana rocks in Ravnica setting. Uh, and when you're just coming off of treasure everywhere, it feels like there's not the fixing that you would want. Well, because we yeah. and I both opened if Mizzet and we're like, oh boy, here we go. And then I just like, I had no support it. to run him. No. Yeah. That's, that's a draft archetype for sure. Yeah. Um, also... I really want to shout out Public Thoroughfare for having that tap and artifact clause. Yeah. Because I think taking your turn two off to, like, do the classic, like, um, you know, turn one, I play a guild gate. Turn two, I play uh, Trans Guild Promenade, tapping my guild gate and moving on to turn three with access to every color um, is going to punish you really hard in this in this set, mm-hmm. right? If you take turn two off to play your public thoroughfare by tapping your land, uh, I yeah. don't, I, I don't, I don't like that. I no. think that's that's very that's a dangerous play pattern. So here's consumer information report for those of you at home. Play boosters may contain these cards: uh, Martyrs at Karlov Manor, cards one through three hundred and seventy-six. Special guests, cards nineteen through twenty-eight. Each play booster contains a combination of one to four cards of rarity, rare or higher. Three to six uncommons, six to nine commons, and one land. One card of any rarity is traditional foil. Foil borderless mythic in less than 1% of boosters, and a traditional foil land replaces a land in 20% of boosters. List card included in 12% of boosters. Okay, I... <laughs> yeah, a bunch of numbers. So, when you are at your pre-release... For... Eh. I would say it was fairly common that people got two rares in their in their packs... Uh, it, we had a couple like i had like I not say, all of, I, I don't know but fairly common but i mean that was the, definitely the most common thing that I, that we saw they didn't make every i mean we didn't make the 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 pack opening video obviously we couldn't show you every single person opening every single one of their packs because it'd been like an hour long um but uh you know there was a few people who got two rares in a pack i was i did serge did i don't know I if i did i didn't re- i don't remember noting it at the time but um i might just have a better memory because of the editing process but fair the sleeve itself the ca- the sleeve of this thing has some uh some punch out uh like punch out cardboard chits that you have here the two big ones are double sided here and one side is for case solved and the other side is suspected because suspected is not a counter uh it's, it's just not, a status it's just a status and this has a little reminder text on it that it says a suspected creature has menace and can't block uh, and then this is case solved for doing that so you can punch those out and then there's other little ones of plus one uh plus one plus one minus one minus one counters and on the back there's uh stun flying unlock and poison which are all counters that can be created by cards in the set then you got your your standard little thing like we've seen before little cardboard what's it you get a spin down 
and your promo, and we'll talk about the promo, which oh. in this case, hey, look, it's Wojak Investigator. We were just talking Ooh, about that one. a good card. Yeah, it's the two, four flying vigilance. At the beginning of your upkeep, investigate once for each opponent who has more cards in hand than you. Cameron definitely got a couple free clues off of that. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, no, excellent card. Uh, I recommend playing two, four flyers with vigilance. For three. For three. Also in this thing, also in the little plastic package with your promo, there's going to be two other things. Sorry, three other things. There's going to be a another punch-out sheet of little counters for case solved and suspected and the same ones that I mentioned before. So that's that's going to be useful for you. Super useful, honestly. There's an arena code for six uh, murders at Karlov Manor boosters. And there's another card. And this card, uh, it can't be played in your deck. So that's why we didn't even show it to you because we're like, we don't want to confuse anyone. Yeah, mm-hmm. there are some people got Voja uh, or uh, uh, Voya Voice of the Conclave with the big angry wolf. I've got Tomic here. Tomic's very cool as well. There was a, a Demir one, I think there was. Um, but uh, annoyingly and confusingly, because it doesn't say that anywhere in the package, the, the, the frontmost promo you can play, the one behind it, you cannot play. I'm sure that your judge or TO will tell you that, but uh, I just wanted to let you know as well. And now I want to open a play booster, and we can we can quickly go through and talk about it. Uh, just for the record, yeah. I have eight rares in my pool. Okay. So uh, you should wind up with seven, and there is roughly a 72% chance that you will get um, uh, at least one pack. Nice. Okay. With, with a second rare. Uh, my token slot is a clue. This is at the back of the pack. You'll get like a token or an art card or something. Because again, these are uh, the play boosters are combinations of draft boosters and set boosters. So this one has a clue. The clues we discovered, the five different clue arts have a panorama on the back that have more detail for the puzzle mm-hmm. uh, that is beyond my pay grade. So have fun with that, everybody. There, all, there's all sorts of stuff. There's there's Reddit. There's threads on Reddit. There's also like a Discord, I think, on the official Magic Discord. Like they have a channel devoted for people. So if you're yeah. interested in that, go check that out there. <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, all right. We've got Bite Down on Crime. Good. We've got, which we've already talked about. We've got Inside Source. This is a 1-1 one, one for three mana. That When it enters the battlefield, you also make a 2-2 two, two detective. So it's mm-hmm. Right, three. yes. That's another one of those really good commons. Yes, yeah, three power and three toughness for three mana. And on, three and tap. It's got an activated ability. Yeah, target detective you control gains plus two, plus oh, and vigilance until end of turn. Yep. So it's good stuff. Uh, Reasonable Doubt, which Cameron talked about. Felonious Rage. Single red mana for a combat trick. It's an instant target creature you control gets plus two plus oh and haste until end of turn. When that creature dies this turn, create a two two white and blue detective. So you can use it as a combat trick or you can use it to give one of your creatures haste. Uh, I like that it's flexible there. Repeat offender, which we talked about, the one that you pay the you pay the cost once and it becomes suspected, or you can get it suspected another way. Uh, and then if you pay the cost a second time, it gets a plus one, plus one counter on it. So it starts, so it becomes a three, two yeah. with menace. Hey, can I talk about a card? This is this is our next common. This looks like something that should be a sideboard card, and I think you are always supposed to main deck it in this format. Oh, mm. is it make your move? No, it's close. It's pick your poison. Oh, okay. Single green mana for a sorcery. Choose one. Each opponent sacks an artifact. Or each opponent sacks an enchantment, or each opponent sacrifices a creature with flying. You can be pretty certain that your opponent is going to have one of those things. Yeah, especially in sealed. Yeah. Um, also, this reminds me, the Gruel Chained to the Rocks at four mana. Oh, uh, Selesnia. Um, yeah. Selesnia, Selesnia. Yeah, uh, buried in the Garden. Yeah. Is really Ooh, strong. That's a beating. Yeah. yeah. So it's a four mana enchantment. For, it's two, uh, two green white enchants a land. It you exile a non land permanent that you don't control under buried in the garden until it leaves the battlefield, which is very unlikely to happen. And when the enchanted land is tapped for mana, 
its controller adds additional mana. So, I don't yeah. think there's any land destruction in this set, no. but there is enchantment yes. removal because we just saw Pick Your Poison. Yeah. yeah. So also, you can I just say, f- p- Pick Your Poison, fantastic uh, marriage of name, mechanics, and flavor text. Yeah. Yeah. I don't shout remember out. who wrote that. But. Uh, but Buried in the Garden is going to warp my my understanding of how I should play this game from now on, considering how badly Nelson got me with it. <laughs> repeatedly yeah very um, very messed up yeah i'm yeah i'm not going to have normal opinions of this set because of this card the uh, flavor text on pick your poison by the way is a reliable general purpose toxin is a handy way to save on belt space <laughs> which i think was mine uh the chase is on as our next common two and a red for an instant target creature gets plus three plus O oh, and first strike until end of turn and investigate so it's one mana more than your typical plus three plus O oh, and first strike combat trick but you also get a clue afterwards. Maybe this is too expensive for this kind of effect, but this seems perfectly reasonable. And now that's it for the commons. So this particular booster had seven commons. Okay. So okay. you get between six and nine. So this is... Seven, that yeah. seems about right. Now we're to the uncommons. Crime Novelist. Ah, yes. I love Crime Novelist. Two and a red for a 1-3 Goblin Bard. I love that they're using Bard there. Why not? That makes sense. Whenever you sacrifice an artifact, this is this card's very strong. This card's cracked. Whenever you sacrifice an artifact, like a clue, put a plus one, plus one counter on Crime Novelist and, and add one red mana. You get a rebate. Can you, if you get two of these yeah. in a clue deck. You just go infinite with your clues. Yeah. yeah. And your Crime Novelists get huge. Your Crime Novelist is very big. Yeah. Also, that's goofy ass flavor text. But look at her expression. She's like, mm. She's having an amazing yeah, time. Very Angela Lansbury. Yeah. 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 Uh, next, Uncommon Detective's Satchel. Two, this, wow. Two blue red for an artifact. When Detective Satchel enters the battlefield, investigate twice. And then tap to create a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. Activate only if you've sacrificed an artifact this turn. Wow. So you find a clue and then you make a Thopter to like ferry the evidence back to the lab, I guess. Yeah. Amazing. And also, yeah, this gives you the two clues straight up. Uh, there's other ways to sacrifice artifacts. There are free ways to sacrifice artifacts. Uh, this seems more like a build around, but... I dig it as a build around. This seems like it's going to be really good in constructed formats as well. I feel like there's definitely ways to break this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, uncommon again. Eliminate the um, the impossible. One in a blue for an instant. Investigate. And creatures your opponent's control get minus two minus zero until end of turn. If any of them are suspected, they are no longer suspected. Oh. So you can make your opponent's creatures lose menace. And lose two power. And pot- this could potentially... Like, Absolutely blow their attack turn out of the water. Yeah. This is only two mana. Usually the like mass debuff costs more than that. Also, and you, you get, get a clue. clue. So kind of you get it replaces itself. Dang, Dang. this card's good. <laughs> this seems sweet, actually. I'm I mean, realistically, even if your opponent's creatures aren't suspected, you can just absolutely mess them up in combat. Yeah. Because uh, suddenly you trades or they kill your creatures turn into they don't kill your creatures mm. we have a fourth uncommon oh there you go it's fester leech single black mana for a one one zombie leech whenever fester leech deals combat damage to a player you mill two cards and then for one and a black fester leech gets plus two plus two until end of turn activate it only once each turn so it's sort of like um hmm. uh there's a there's a wolf from one of the Innistrad sets that yeah. has this kind of thing where it's mm-hmm. just, right. it's a 1-1, one, one, but you can make it to 3-3, three, three, but you can only do that once. And then you can mill cards and that helps your evidence collection later. Hmm. So that's cool. This is one of yours, isn't it, Kathleen? Uh, Four dead and zombie leech attack, comma, dozens nauseated. Uh, yes. So I submitted a bunch of 10th District Times stuff because when you're submitting flavor text you know want to try a whole, whole lot of different varieties of ways you're going about it mm-hmm. uh and i don't know how many of them sir, this might have been the only one that got in but it makes sense that if there's some sort of crime wave going on that they would be reporting about it yeah. uh my original was four injured in zombie leech attack dozens nauseated but i i remember the note from fox saying we're going to change this to dead because it's snappier and more newsworthy more newsworthy yeah i feel like people probably uh 
people somebody got injured oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh there's a there's a land slot in mm-hmm. this case it's just a basic mountain but it could be other stuff there's a foil every pack has a foil because again this is part of the merging of set boosters every pack has a foil in this case it's the projector inspector which we talked about earlier nice and the so rare projector inspector is a common right yeah uh, yes so you did get your you got a common but yeah. it's a foily common that's true and you you can get because i think this is i think we saw this happen once that you can get one of the rare lands in the land slot and your rare and your foil could be rare i yes. think i think we saw yeah, yeah. that happen in the in the pool openings just like before when you got a foil in your pack which sometimes happened it could be a foil rare or it could be a foil whatever and our actual rare is case of the uneaten feast which is a single white mana for a case whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control you gain one life so it's like a soul sister on a Mm -hmm. stick here or not on a stick i suppose on an enchantment uh to solve which is a nicely spaced t on this one uh You've gained five or more life this turn. Interesting. And once solved, you can sacrifice it, and creature cards in your graveyard gain. You may cast this card from your graveyard until end of turn. I don't know. I mean, I would run this in this limited environment just because gaining a life every time a creature enters the battlefield is amazing. I really don't think you're going to get to that gain five life. I'm trying to... Think about all the life gain effects that there are in the set. There's not a ton. There, there, there. There's a few. There's creatures with life link yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, like Mortipede can do this conceivably in one swing. Yeah, that's true. If you have a creature into the battlefield, then Mortipede hits for four with life link. Yeah. Then that's that's a total of five. Uh, no, Mortipede. It the, you, a creature has to leave your graveyard. Yeah. For well, but it's if if you do that, then then okay. Mortipede hits and for you four cast with life a creature. Link. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't. Th- I don't think it's unreasonable. That, okay. Also, if you do solve it, then late in the game, you get to be like, because presumably you're doing this with a uh, with a deck with a lot of cheap creatures. Yeah. Then late in the game, like you just sort of keep it around, gaining you life, and then eventually you have a turn where you're like, all right, I got eight mana this turn. I'm going to cash this in and replay and get three, like four, four creatures. Yeah, yeah, four creatures back out of my bin. That's because again, backbreaking. The, the ones and two drops are good. So I mean, as you can see. Uh, this feels like a pretty normal booster. I don't know. I I think that I I appreciate and I understand why they did that whole breakdown on what a play booster is going to look like, but it really made it seem like they were going to be they're going to mess with weirder? draft. No, not that. I mean, was a draft is undeniably going to be different as a result of these, but uh, I thought it would feel more strange. I thought it would feel more akin to drafting with set boosters. Than it does. I think mm-hmm. it feels feels pretty normal. It's just sort of like you just sort of have this. To me, anyway, I'm like, oh, I got a foil. Oh, oh, I got a foil every time. Why? Oh, how lucky I am! I got a foil every time. Yeah, hmm. I don't yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I think that maybe you'll have you'll see a few more rares and stuff like circling the table and stuff. But also anything that like. So there's a very classic card from original Ravnica. It's like Zephyr Spirit. It's like a super expensive mono, mono blue card. And like every time it blocks, you have to return it to your hand. So bad. It's just wretched. And there's a long history of just some real garbage magic cards. And basically with the new design philosophy is like there shouldn't be filler cards in the same way in the set which i think is good because filler cards like that are only feels bad when you open them and sealed because it's basically like you got one less card and they're only traps for new players that make them feel bad and stupid Hmm. so like anything that sort of reduces that just like i wish i didn't have this at all or i've made a mistake and i feel bad about it i think enhances the game for everyone at all skill levels Mm -hmm. (laughs) so yeah i i gotta say i think this adds sweet and a lot of fun and i'm looking forward to playing a lot more of it uh especially when it hits when it when it uh hits arena um and i hope hope everyone at home has a good time at their pre-release next weekend yeah go do a pre-release yeah because they're fun they're low stakes you get to hang out with people uh and uh experience what makes magic fun which uh i honestly a lot of big part of it is the gathering Mm -hmm. and next week if you want to see us play a bunch of this on arena 
Uh, then you can tune in for the Fam Jam. We're doing another Loading Ready Run Fam Jam. It's our first one in this moon base, I think. And uh, yeah, we're, which is what the Fam Jam is: is a bunch of us just hang out all day and draft an arena. And there's like we cycle through a bunch of different folks, and uh, I mean draft and sealed. Um, and we're doing it because there's no streamer event this year. We're doing it on the day that we get that the set comes out on arena. Mm. Um, so that's Tuesday, Feb sixth. Yes. And uh, we'll start at 10 a.m., assuming Arena is functional. And, uh, yeah, we'll just be playing Arena all day long. So tune in and uh, join us for that. And I want to remind you again, as we mentioned a couple times, and again at the PPR, but if you're a fan of Ravnica and D&D, two great tastes that taste great together, please go check out Bylaw and Order 2, the sequel to our beloved Ravnica D&D campaign from years ago. Five years ago. And uh, the first episode is out on the Loading Ready Run tabletop channel. That's L-R-R-T-T. And we'll put a link for that in the description of this video as well. Uh, Kathleen uh, wrote it and is running it. And Cameron is in it along with Mm -hmm. Ben and Ian and Wheeler. And it's it's a hilarious time. Someone in the comments was... And I, I think this is wonderful that they thought to ask. But they were like, hey, is Kathleen a fan of like... Terry Pratchett or Douglas Adams, because I'm definitely getting some of those vibes here. And uh, yes, correct, very much. I think I think you could have just said that as a statement rather than a question. Yeah, I mean, I not 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 gigantic spoilers because it's literally one of the things that comes up, and one of the first things I say is that uh, you know there is a something called the Omen Hiker's Guide to the Multiverse, mm-hmm. which is, I would not say is a major plot point, no. but I feel like that tells you everything you need to know. Yeah, mm. so tune in for that. It's a, it's a super fun super fun time of a D&D actual play. But that is going to do it for Tap Tap Concede this week. A reminder, of course, that Tap Tap Concede is brought to you by Card Kingdom. Please check out cardkingdom.com slash LRR. We really appreciate you doing that. It helps us out. And, of course, what helps us out even more is your kind support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. You, d- you did this, and we appreciate it. Until next time, I have been Graham, joined by Kathleen. Bye-bye. And Cameron. Huh? James has been on tech. Heather gets these online. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.